Welcome to Marketecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology executives. I'm Ari Papero. Today I'm joined by Marty Kine, the SVP of strategy for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Marty, thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Ari. So Salesforce does a lot of things. Big company. It owns Newsweek, right? Or Time or something? Time. I kind of lost track of Well, that. actually, Salesforce <laughs> doesn't have Time. Mark Benioff, Mark the Benioff, co-founder I mean. of Salesforce on time, yeah. Okay, um, you have stadiums named after you. It's a big company. Today, we're just going to talk about the CDP, which is, I guess, the cornerstone product of the uh, marketing cloud. Yep. So um, let's just get it started. So what is the Salesforce CDP? <laughs> Well, Salesforce Customer Data Platforms, aka CDP, is a customer data platform, pretty much. Uh, we resisted calling it that in the beginning because the category is so disparate, heterogeneous, and confusing. Last time we checked in with Customer Data Platform Institute and our good friend David Robb, there are 147 CDPs. And I can tell you from personal experience, each one is a little bit different. But broadly speaking, our CDP does conform to the general specifications of a customer data fl- platform. And the history of, of it within Salesforce is that around 2018, there was a survey. So I was at Gartner and I joined in 2018, four years ago. There was a survey that came out and it said, uh, ask CMOs, you know, what CDP are you using? Because CDP was a hot topic and it was up the Gartner hype cycle. And Salesforce came in first. We were the number one CDP, and, but we didn't have a CDP in market at the time. So, it, you know, it, within Salesforce, they said, well, what's going on here? This is a very strange category that we're winning. We're very happy to be winning, but we don't actually have one. And uh, the question was, you know, is it, does it exist? Is it the same as CRM? Is it identical? Is it different? Is there something that new? And we did a build by partner analysis and ended up realizing some, it is something new and new capabilities need to be built. And the decision was made not to acquire, which is the typical Salesforce motion, but to build it on top of the Salesforce platform. So it's built on the same code base as Sales Cloud and Service Cloud, which are, you know, products that started Salesforce CRM and turned it into number one CRM, I should say. And so CDP is the first part of Marketing Cloud that's actually a natively built product, and it's our most successful natively built product you know, ever. And it was launched two years ago, so that would be 2020 in the fall. So let's walk through what the CDP is and does. Kind of, uh, We're going to have a demo for Marketecture subscribers, but let's talk about it first. I guess to breaking it up in terms of like data ingestion, you know, analytics and and clean data cleaning, appending, and then using, you know, how if that's a good way to look at it, or maybe you have a different framework. Well, there's a typical framework. I mean, there's different ones because parts of it are optional, and also different CDPs do different things better than. But in general, there has to be a way to ingest data. So yes, streaming data or batch. And that could be pre-built connectors. It could be you know custom connectors, endpoints, whatever uh, mm-hmm. APIs, and then transformation. So the data is landed somewhere, usually in a data lake, and it's transformed. So that could be light ETL. It's, this is not a MDM process. It's not a, a real kind of you know IT type ETL process. So it's light transformation and then harmonization to a data model. That's important because you need F name and F underscore name and F name underscore to all be pointing to something called first name so that mm-hmm. you can have a unified profile. So that's important. That's harmonization, the data model. And then there's identity management, which is maybe the hardest part, which is figuring out the person A and person B are the same person Mm -hmm. or the same count. And there's all kinds of fancy math going on there. Or maybe they have the same exact email. That's easy. (laughs) But it you know, it, it can be hard. And then um, the optional part is how much analytics is built into CDP. So you have the unified profile and, you know, is there an analytics workbench? And we have a declarative kind of drag and drop interface where you could do segmentation so you can pull attributes over if then and or but do a count build an audience very easy some tools don't have that you know you you point other tools to it of course you can use bi you can use data science pipelines and then there needs to be an activation so data these audiences that you built either streaming or in batch have to go somewhere and so you have to be able to connect it to email systems, you know, mobile push, uh, website personalization, advertising, call center, what have you. So it's ingestion, organization, analysis, egestion. Right, right. So we'll going through those one at a time. So ingestion, do you have sort of like this catalog of tens or hundreds of sources going to get, you know, MailChimp data and 
you know, data from N sources into my uh, CDP. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. We, we started with Salesforce sources. The reason being our customers would be very unhappy if our CDP couldn't easily ingest data from marketing cloud, sure, sure, okay. service cloud, commerce cloud, uh, all the various clouds. So that's one, you know, basically push button integration. Another method is there's a tag and an SDK. So, and it's harmonized with the personalization product. So you can, you can collect streaming data off your site. You can collect it off your mobile app. Another method is using MuleSoft. MuleSoft is a Salesforce acquisition that is essentially for integration of data, a lot of it from kind of uh, homegrown systems like databases sitting in the basement. But it uses APIs to build a kind of API framework. So it's API management. But it has pre-built connectors to 250 sources if you use MuleSoft. You don't have to. Another way is to, to use Amazon S3 as a kind of staging ground like as a source and an endpoint. So you can import almost anything into an S3 bucket and then port it into CDP, which is a nice kind of custom way to do things. You can also very soon use Snowflake in a similar manner, although you're not literally porting data from Snowflake into CDP, is zero copy, which is more technically sophisticated, but also possible, they tell me. And then there's also AppExchange. We have a platform on the CRM side where partners can, they themselves put effort into pre-building applications and connectors that plug into the app exchange. And we have a bunch of those already. We have um, a couple dozen, mostly for ad advertising activation. And then also data enrichment, you mentioned, like we had Epsilon, we had Dentsu, Aegis, Mercury, uh, Axiom as a partner there. And then finally, there's big partnerships that we have. So uh, we announced a big partnership with Google. And when I mean big, it's not just like salespeople selling together. It's um, engineers have built something. <laughs> and so there's one with Google, your old friends, and then uh, one with Amazon as well. We could talk about it's mostly around analytics. And then we have a, an ongoing thing with Meta and then other ad, ad endpoints. Thanks for listening. To hear the complete interview, subscribe at architecture.tv. 